Our readings this morning are perhaps difficult words to hear. You may be used to hearing the blessings of the Beatitudes. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Perhaps we're less used to hearing about the woes. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. We are a rich church and we are also a generous church compared to many communities in Sheffield we have much and certainly compared to other Christians around the world they would be amazed at our riches and our wealth we have much but we also give much so how do we respond to these verses? This morning uh, I want to reflect on some of my experiences in this community during this last year and I hope as I reflect on these um, it will be helpful as we think through how we respond to our situation and how we can live faithfully trusting God and following Jesus' teaching. Like a lot of streets in Sheffield, the street that we live on has set up a WhatsApp group um, so that neighbours can look out for each other. It was set up back in March at the start of lockdown so that anybody shielding or isolating would have access to food and to medicines. And this does happen and it has happened throughout the year, but the group has also grown into other things. It's become a place for conversation, for swapping information, for keeping in touch with each other. Some days uh, you turn on WhatsApp and there's like 30 messages and you just have to scroll through loads uh, to make sure that you've got the information you need. Some neighbours have had more time during this year, uh, certainly during the first lockdown and they use the time to clear out those cupboards, to go through the boxes in the attic, those things they'd been meaning to clear out for years and had never quite got round to it. So there's been quite a lot of passing on, especially families with older children, they've been passing on toys and games and clothes onto families with younger children. One of our neighbours helps out at the S2 food bank, so as a street we've been certainly in the first lockdown doing weekly food deliveries through her and another neighbour volunteers at the Archer Project so we've been able to pass on clothes and toiletries through him. Through these different things we've been able to feel connected to others, um, to other communities in Sheffield, to those living in S2 for example um, who are more in need at the moment. And it's been good, I think, to have that weekly reminder that our neighbours aren't just the people who are living next door, but that our neighbours are also people living on the other side of Sheffield. During this crisis, um, I think it's fair to say that we've seen both acts of great community generosity but we've also seen acts of selfishness. Um, I'm sure you can remember those early weeks just before lockdown um, back in, in February and March when um, there was that toilet roll fiasco. Um, and though there was a while, wasn't there, when you know the shops were getting stocked up again, but there was always um, a, almost a sense of anxiety. Oh, I better buy this bag of pasta because it might not be here if I don't take this one. Now there were in the papers some, um, you know, quite dramatic stories about panic buying and there were a few people buying huge quantities. But in the main the shortages that we saw were caused not by people buying huge amounts 
but by most people just buying one or two extra packets. And I think most of us can understand that. When things are in short supply, we feel anxious. It's normal to want to protect those we love and to ensure they have what they need. It's normal to think, oh yeah, it, it, I'll, I'll, I'll just make sure I do have some extra rice and pasta, some extra tins in the cupboard, because at any moment you could find out that you need to go into isolation and you can't nip out to the shops. Whilst it's normal and understandable to want to protect those we care for, those we love, and to make sure that they have enough food to eat. These feelings affect our attitude towards money, towards stocking things up for ourselves. Um, These attitudes can shape our response to giving also. The studies into charitable giving in the UK surprisingly show that it's actually those who have less, those who earn less, who give away a larger proportion of their earnings. Those who have less, who live in poorer areas, give away a larger proportion of what they earn than those who actually have more and earn more. I've lived in a range of places. I currently live, as you know, in one of the most affluent areas of Sheffield, But I've also lived in urban areas where deprivation levels are high. And for a while I lived on the edge of a second generation refugee camp in Zambia. I think what I've experienced in each of the places that I've lived, that whilst the levels of need and resource have been different in each of those places, In each of those communities, I've encountered both great generosity and great selfishness and everything in between. Although it doesn't make sense that those who have less give a larger proportion of what they earn, it also doesn't surprise me because if you can see the needs of those who are nearby, you're more likely to be able to empathise with them. My challenge that I find living here on this side of the city is that I can become um, that many steps away from real need and real hunger. When I lived in S2, you couldn't really choose to walk away from need because it was much more on your doorstep. It was obvious. Um, You couldn't kind of close the door um, and just forget about it. And the more you see these needs, the more you um, are faced with the reality of poverty on your doorstep, the more you can understand it and the easier in some ways it is to respond with kindness and generosity. For each of us, whatever situation we're currently in, it can be harder to respond to those in need if we're not aware of what those needs are. It can also be really difficult to respond to need if we feel anxious about ourselves and about those we love. And this year, of any I have experienced, has been one of the most anxious years. Levels of anxiety across the population have gone through the roof. We feel perhaps more uncertain about the future than we have for a long time. And when we feel that anxiety, it can be hard to see beyond our own needs. But we can bring our anxieties and our concerns to God. God is present 
loving and listening and we can bring our anxieties to God and we can bring our concerns for our neighbours and for those around us who are in need, those who are hungry, those who are poor, we can bring these both to God. Perhaps at this time God is calling us to deeper habits of prayer and action. Coming to God in prayer and dependence on him, bringing our concerns and our anxieties before him and asking him, Lord, send us out. Show us how to act. Show us how to be your hands. Show us how to be your care and your love for the poor today. Show us how to feed the hungry, how to lift up those who are oppressed. Show us how to follow you. I want to finish by um, talking you through a prayer activity which you can do now and also in your own time. It uses different prayer positions to help us bring our own anxieties to God and also to bring the needs of our neighbours, to bring those needs before God, asking God for guidance and direction in how to respond and act. Now, I, I've been doing this prayer activity um, and I found it really helpful, especially during lockdown and especially at times when I've felt stressed or I've felt anxious. It involves praying in different positions, so standing, kneeling and lying down and I'll take you through each of these as we go. Sometimes when we're stressed and anxious, we, we kind of feel like we're stressed in our minds, but actually um, the stress is felt and the anxiety is felt in our whole body. And so praying using different positions can help us to engage with God's peace and to hear his voice. So I'll talk you through these positions. If actually you find it difficult to get into these positions, the, this prayer activity can be done sat down, um, just using your hands um, or imagining through each position. So to begin, stand up and put your arms up in front of you, hands open. If you imagine it's how someone stands when they're standing behind the altar when doing communion. And as you stand there, breathe in. And remember that there is nothing that separates us from God. God loves us. We can stand before God in openness and honesty. And if you're doing this prayer activity in a, in a quiet time, you may want to stand here for a long time, taking in deep breaths. If there are worries, or if there are things that seem to be stopping you from connecting to God, just offer those to God. Speak them out. Just give them to God in prayer. And then when you're ready, kneel down. And as you kneel down, put your hands together into a prayer position. And as you're kneeling, bring to God your own cares and your cares for others. 
bring to God those who are in need. If you know their names, you can name them. And then when you have spoken out those needs to God, lie down. Let your hands drop down, palms open. And as you do, rest in God's care and provision. God provides for your needs. God provides for the needs of the world. And with your hands open, let go of the burdens you're carrying. Trust in God, the God who provides. And when you're ready to do so, slowly begin to stand up. Stand up to move into the day. What is it that's before you? Pray for the day ahead. Listen for what God might be saying. Is there something God is asking you to do today? Is there something God is asking you to give? Is there something God is asking you to share? Is there something God is asking you to do? Lord God, we thank you that you provide for our needs. Lord, help us not to live in anxiety and fear. Help us to trust you. Lord God, help us to be your hands and feet. Help us to share with those in need. Open our eyes to the needs all around us. Lead us out, Lord, into the world to be your church and your witnesses and to be your love. Amen. <laughs>